Hello, everyone. This is Drew Brown, Recruitment and Training Specialist with the Go Health Virtual Marketing Organization. Due to recent changes by CMS, we have had to shut off the single site enrollment process for on exchange submissions through the marketplace. So instead, we'll be looking today at the direct enrollment process. Now, these changes again are only affecting on exchange submissions, not off exchange or ancillary sales. And the quoting engine itself has not changed, just the enrollment pathway. So, what you're looking at here is my shopping cart. I got to this page by quoting a consumer and clicking continue on a plan just as we're used to seeing in other demonstrations. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and I'm going to click begin online enrollment. And instead of being taken to the single site enrollment application, I'm actually just taken to this page that's telling me how to apply for this policy. If I scroll right down here, click continue. Once I've clicked continue, I'm actually launched to healthcare.gov and my FFM user ID is already input for me and it will be for you as well. What you will have to input yourself is your password. So you need to remember your password. This is the same password that you use to log into the CMS portal. If you can't remember it, then please visit the CMS portal, go to the right hand side of the screen and click forgot password and they'll just give you a series of steps to recover that password. So I've input my password, I'm gonna click log in. And then I'm taken to this page that says, what would you like to do? So I actually have a couple options. I can either start a brand new application or I can look up an existing application. You only want to look up an existing application if you're trying to help a consumer enroll who has been auto enrolled into a 2016 policy. Otherwise, the majority of the people that you're speaking to, you will simply want to start a new application. So you're going to select the year. Of course, this would be for 2016. I'm trying to enroll somebody in coverage to take effect on January 1st as they do not have a qualifying life event to enroll in 2015. So 2016 coverage and what state. The individual that I quoted was in the state of Illinois, so I'm clicking Illinois for the application state. I click Start Application, and I'm actually taken to this page, which is a page that I can still look up an application, but I'm going to ignore all this, and I'm just going to go right up here. It says Find an Application or Start a New One, so I'm going to click Start a New One. And now I'm taken to the disclaimer. These are the same disclaimers that we see on the single site enrollment process. Your consumer either needs to read these or you need to read them to them verbatim and they need to state their agreement. Once they have done so, you can click that checkbox next to I agree and then click take me to the application. So here's the first steps of the application. All that you need to do is read this information and make sure that you're filling it out accurately. Healthcare.gov has actually streamlined this process a lot so it's much more efficient for both agents and consumers, but you do want to make sure that you're just reading everything and following along as we go. So this is the information for our consumer that we are helping enroll. Are they single or are they married? Single. And again, this will be specific to each consumer you work with. How many dependents? I'm putting in zero to keep it simple. How much income will they make this year? $49,000 or less or more than 49,000. So it's basically asking whether or not they will be able to qualify or apply for a subsidy. The income I input to quote this consumer was $20,000. So I'm going to put in $49,000 or less. And this says based on your estimated household income in 2016 of less than $49,000, you may get help paying for coverage. Do you want to answer additional questions to see if you qualify for help paying for coverage? So anyone who is potentially eligible for a advanced premium tax credit or a tax subsidy or premium subsidy, you want to click yes and then continue. Questions about people applying for coverage, again, it'll list the, all the applicants and ask the questions individually, but you just want to read through them. Do they currently live in Illinois? We're saying yes. Do they plan to file a federal income tax return in 2016? Yes. Are they a U.S. citizen? I'm going to say yes for this demonstration. Can you enter your social security number? I'm going to say yes for this demonstration. Are you applying under a different name than the one on your social security card? Are you a naturalized or derived citizen? Are you currently incarcerated? Are you an American Indian or native Alaskan? Are you responsible for a child 18 years or younger? Are you offered health insurance coverage through your job, someone else's job or COBRA? And is anyone pregnant or had a child within the last 60 days? So just answer all those questions once you've entered. All those answers, you can then click continue. And now, we are on the household contact information, 
home address, and other uh, proprietary of the person's name here, if they have a last name or a middle name, their email address, phone number, preferred language, you can choose to go paperless and get notices only by email instead of in their in their mailbox. I want to put in their home address. Again, I'm using a downtown Chicago address. You'll see the reason I'm using an actual address is because the system will recognize the zip code and the address that I put in. Otherwise, it'll tell me that it couldn't find it. So you see what it says right here, did you mean and then it gives me the full-on address. If I had to put in a fake address, it would tell me it couldn't find that address, and then it would prevent me from going forward. I can click Update to get in the full and accurate address. Mailing address, we're going to say, is the same as the permanent address. If anyone has a different, you just select No, and it will give you options to input that. Check and update your information. So this is asking for information on their Social Security card. This information that I'm putting in is going to be false but you want to make sure that it's absolutely accurate for your consumer. You do not have to answer the race slash ethnicity question. You do have to answer their gender. Click continue and it's going to load. Okay, now we're on the income information section. So again, just like with the single site enrollment process, you need to add their source of income. So we click add new source of income, type, it's going to be a job, again asking the employer name, phone number, how much they make per year. Again, I quoted this person because they told me that they made $20,000 a year, and that is the information I put in. I'm going to put in their rate, this would be per year. Um, if they have an employee identification number, it is great to put it in, but that is an optional field. Um, as well as the employer address, and we just click Save. There we have it. Do you have any deductions in 2016? Again, the same as with the single site enrollment process. We're going to select No. And then the yearly income, it's just going to reconfirm based on what we entered, minus any deductions. Income should be 20000 Is that correct? We click Yes, and we click Continue. We have a few additional questions. Uh, does anyone have a physical or mental health condition? Again, it'll ask it and list out the people on the application. If any of those statements are true, you just need to click the checkbox next to their name. We're going to say that none of them are true. We're going to leave all the checkboxes unclicked. Click Continue. Is John Smith currently enrolled in health coverage? So it's going to ask some more questions. We're going to say no. Additional coverage questions. Were any of these people found not eligible for Medicaid? Again, you just check the box next to the name if it is true. And then questions about life changes. So this is going to check to see if they have a QLE to get 2015 coverage. Again, you would just check the name or check the box next to the name. We're going to leave all those blank. Renewal, renewal of coverage. You just need to read this statement to your consumer. Make sure they understand it. I'm going to state that I agree. Tax filer information. Again, it's important that your consumer read this or, or you just read it to them and make sure that they understand the information listed here, and then you can click Review Application. We've got our application summary page, again, very, very similar to the single site enrollment confirmation screen. Scroll down here and you see the agree statements. Uh, these need to be read verbatim to the consumer. They need to read them themselves. Agreeing to those statements, agreeing to sign and submit and submitting the application. This can take a few moments to process, so we're just going to watch it. Application submitted. And now we're being taken to the eligibility results page. So eligibility results are viewable at this point in time via PDF. You're actually going to have to click on this and view them before this button, Return to Enrollment Website, will become active. So I'm clicking on the eligibility results, downloads it into a PDF. You can take a look at the results for your consumer. You can print this, save it, send it to them via email, whatever you'd like to do. It's very good for them to have so they understand their results. 
And then step three, continue to enrollment is enabled. So I click return to enrollment website. And now we are actually going to go back to the Go Health Marketplace automatically. It'll take a few moments to resume progress. And now we are back on our eligibility results page within the Go Health Marketplace. So have a couple pieces of information here. They're going to confirm the tax subsidy amount. It's confirmed for my consumer at $104 per month. Um, we'll be using the full amount. And then there's actually a federal subsidy application ID that's really good to save yourself as a broker and provide to your consumer. So I see the eligibility results page. We've got details on the eligibility results right here. We click continue. And then it says, thank you for your patience. We just need a little more information to continue with the enrollment, making sure who the primary applicant is. Have they used tobacco? Again, I'm going to state no. You want to make sure that you are stating that up front when you're using the quoting engine. Click continue. To complete the enrollment, please confirm and officially attest that your information is accurate. So you've already selected a plan when you click continue before you actually launch to the direct enrollment process through healthcare.gov. If for some reason the subsidy was re-estimated, for example, um, and healthcare.gov has determined that they receive maybe less or more of a subsidy and you want to look for maybe cheaper coverage. So maybe they received $100 up front and for some reason healthcare.gov has come back with 75 and now, because of the subsidy change, the premium on the plan that you quoted them and were attempting to enroll them in um, has increased for them, and they want to select a cheaper plan. That's just one scenario why you might want to change the plan. You can always just click Change Plan right here, and it'll allow you to select a new plan, okay, and take you right back uh, to where you left off. So again, these disclaimers need to be read by the consumer or read verbatim. They need to state that they've read and accept the disclaimers. And if you're signing for the consumer, you just need to obtain their agreement, request their authorization to sign the application on their behalf, or they can type this in themselves. And then you would click accept and sign, which I'm not going to actually submit this because I would be submitting a dummy application to one of our carriers, which we don't want to do. But once you click submit and sign, you simply would receive the same confirmation screen that you received through the same uh, single site enrollment process giving you next steps, giving you information, saying congratulations, so on and so forth. So we're going to keep it short and sweet so that we don't bog people down with information. That is the direct enrollment process. We have several live versions of this walkthrough that are going to be made available. So check with your affiliates, check with your manager to register for those processes. You can see it live and you can ask questions as we go through it. Thanks much, everybody. Happy open enrollment.